Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue considering the subject of lighting and in particular we're going to pick up where we left off in the last video looking at the luminous flux method. Now you re may remember from that video we looked at uh, the way to calculate how many lumens were required to bring the light level in a room to a certain value. And we looked at uh, the different components of this formula and we did some example calculations and saw what happened when we changed that and tweaked that a little bit. What we're going to be doing in this video is now looking at what we do with this information in order to uh, develop our lighting scheme and to help figure out just exactly how many light fittings we need in order to reach this illumination level. Now please bear in mind that lighting design is a very very complex subject and there's all sorts of additional factors that we'll look at in future videos that determine exactly which light fitting you're going to be installing. For the purposes of this video I've just chosen a random one uh, that I happen to like. This isn't product placement or sponsorship or anything like that, it's just I happen to know this fitting uh, and I think it's a good example for what we're looking at here. What we're looking at is just the basics here and how to get from the number of lumens required to illuminate our space to the correct level and how we arrive at the correct number of fittings to install in there. So it's very, very simple. All we've got to do is pick our light fitting. So in this case, I've decided that we're going to use the Collingwood Solis. So this is uh, one variant of the Collingwood Solis. It's just an LED panel light and it uh, has a number of different sizes available to it. But the critical information that we actually want for this video is if we scroll down, you can see here that we've got a lumen value for each variant of this light fitting. So in this case, these are just different. Uh, the reason there's three lines of fittings here is that there's different control methods for dimming, non-dimming, uh, etc. So uh, they all output the same amount of light. And that's found in this column with LM at the top here. So you can see there we've got each one of these fittings outputs 3,000 300 lumens of luminous flux. So all we've got to do in order to figure out the number of light fittings that we require now is to take the number of lumens required to bring the light level up to the correct value and divide it by the lumen output of the light fitting. So let me show you what I mean. So we're trying to find uh, what is often uh, given the letter N as a capital for number of fittings. And all we've got to do is take our required lumen level of 11,111 and divide it by the lumen output of the light fitting. So here we've got 11,111 divided by 3,300. And when we do that calculation, and I'll just volley that into the calculator, I won't bring it up on screen. If you don't know how to put this into your calculator, you may well be on the wrong course. So 11,111 divided by 3,300, and we get there now, we get an interesting answer because actually this comes out at 3.37, uh, we'll call it, 3.37 fittings. Now, I'm sure that the eagle-eyed among you will look at that and go, well, how on earth are we going to install just over a third of a fitting? Well, obviously, we're not going to do that. Now, traditionally with maths, what we would do is we'd look at that number and think, right, well, I need to round that off. I need a whole number there. So you'd look at the following number and think, right, that's uh, five or less. So therefore, I'm going to round that down to three. But obviously, if we only select three fittings for this space, we're not going to have enough luminous flux for that area. So we always have to round this up to the next value. So that means that for this particular requirement, we're going to need four of those Collingwood fittings installed into that space in order to achieve the correct illuminance level. Now for our next calculation that we've got here, do you remember for this one we changed the maintenance factor for that room? We made the maintenance factor lower, which actually ended up giving us a higher value of luminous flux required. So let's apply the same principle to this value of luminous flux and say that the number of fittings will be equal to the luminous flux that's required to illuminate the space, so 14,286, divided again by that value of 3,300. And again, when we do that calculation, we come out with an interesting answer, 14,286 divided by 3,300. We come out with a value of 4.33 after we've rounded that. So we end up with 4.33 fittings. Now, obviously that's a nonsense. We can't install a third of a fitting. 
So that's going to get rounded up to five fittings. So we've done the maths and we've got to the right answer. And when we're dealing with this on a theoretical level, as we probably will be in a college environment, that's the right answer, five fittings. However, in the real world, this becomes a little bit of a challenge because five fittings within a given room doesn't necessarily space very nicely. Unless you've got a very long, thin room and you can just have all the lights running down the centre uh, and casting a reasonable spread of light sideways, if you've got a, a square room or a rectangular room, it's going to be quite difficult to space out five fittings so that you get a nice spread of light. So what you might end up doing in this case is trying to figure out if there's a fitting that has a slightly lower value of luminous flux, not necessarily less uh, efficacy, but a lower value of luminous flux so that you actually end up installing slightly more fittings. Or you might go the other way and decide that you want to get a light fitting with a higher value of luminous flux, in which case you in, end up installing slightly less fittings. However, there is a danger in that because kind of if you follow that process, the logical conclusion is, well, let's just put one big light fitting in the middle of the room that has an output of 15,000 lumens. Now, obviously what that's gonna end up doing is giving you an incredibly intense patch of light in the middle of the room and very little around the edge. And that would lead to what's called poor uniformity, which we'll explain again in a different video. So you can see the, the challenge that we're up against already as uh, lighting designers when we start doing these calculations as electricians. There's a number of ways around it. You might go to six fittings and uh, install dimming technology. That could be a requirement of the installation anyway, in order to bring the illuminance uh, down to the right level. However, it's, it's quite a knotty problem for us to deal with. And it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. What we're looking at here is how do we arrive at this answer based on the information that we're given. So that's basically how it's done. It's fairly straightforward. I think you'll agree that's fairly simple. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at a much more complex question that kind of takes us from uh, start to finish with this calculation and we'll figure out how many fittings are required for a given space in a WANA. So there's a bit more of a process to it, but it will bring together a lot of the things that we've spoken about over the last uh, couple of videos. So the next video and the following two will probably contain uh, more examples of how to calculate light levels based on exam type questions. So hopefully they'll be helpful for you if you're going into an exam type situation. So there we go. That's how we get from our required illuminance level, our required uh, luminous flux level. Sorry, I should say. Uh, that's how we get from our required luminous flux level to the number of fittings required within that space to bring it up to the correct level of illuminance. So all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.